Well, hello and welcome back to our playthrough of the Talos Principle 2, uh, where we left off last time in our very first episode. Uh, we started the game, of course, and it has been absolutely amazing. It's just been a, a world of nostalgia, getting back into the puzzles that we experienced, you know, the same style of in the first game. Um, but very different in just about every other aspect of the game. We are uh, out and about in the free world. We are in this new world that the robots have created uh, called New Jerusalem. And we were tasked last time with joining in on an expedition to go and explore new areas out in the world that the robots, I guess, haven't discovered yet. But we do have this side quest that you can maybe see right above me that says, uh, optionally, we can explore New Jerusalem. And as someone who likes to do all the things and explore all the areas, I am very inclined to do just that. So I think we are going to go out and do a little bit of some exploration before we continue with our, our journey and, and go on that expedition that we were talking about. I think if we go over here, this will bring us back to this elevator. Ooh. I get used to my robot legs, just getting a little ahead of myself. Does it automatically control itself? That's really Attention convenient. Attention all citizens. Due to the new power management and distribution plan, there will be scheduled outages on Jameson Avenue and Rakovsky Plaza. The Gehenna Memorial Pavilion will remain closed for the time being. Ah, Gehenna. Thank you. And may the founder be with you. May the founder be with you, but nobody knows where the founder is, so... All right. Um, wow. Well, I yeah. I I think we ended up on a different floor than where we started because yeah. I don't think we got to go outside before we got in this building last time. This is Damien. So um, I was wondering before what the like the red symbol beside their names meant. And I think what I've come to find out is that that just means that they don't have anything to say to you. Hello, 1K. Welcome to New Jerusalem. Thanks. I know you've just had a big moment with the apparition at the dam and all that, but can I have a second of your time? Well, absolutely. Sure, go ahead. It'd be funny if I said no thank you, like, since I'm the one that approached him. <laughs> also, completely side note, but I really love the shade of green of the dude that's beside him. I'm collecting signatures to call for a public referendum on the city's energy crisis. Uh, what's the problem? Currently, the city runs on hydroelectric power from the dam, plus a handful of geriatric generators and some unreliable solar panels, none of which is enough to even cover our basic needs. And if anything fails, we'll be on the brink of extinction in a matter of days. Wow. Um... Hmm... What are you proposing? We need to investigate new sources of reliable baseline power. It's fair. We need to invest time and resources into functional, real-world solutions that serve human needs. Why a referendum and not an election? Uh, do you work at the dam? Uh, what do you make of Prometheus? Um, let's let's ask this. Well, an election would be good too, but I believe that we need more direct democratic control over the affairs of the city. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you work at the dam? No, I help run the public transit system, but I witness the impact of the city's power problems every day. We can't just wish them away. What do you make of Prometheus? Prometheus, I think that was like the purple dude that like popped out of thin air and was very daunting. Byron's been advocating exploring that island for some time, and obviously he's right. Something very strange is going on there, and it's going to start affecting us. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, tell me more about Byron. In all honesty, I think Byron is the smartest, most visionary person in this city. He's everything we need, and I don't understand why he won't run for mayor. Hmm... The other option that we had is to provide a digital signature. Like, I just feel like I don't know enough about the issue yet with the, you know, 
um, the, the power situation. Like, obviously, like, it's an issue because the power keeps going out. But, like, I, I'd like to know more about, like, you know, his, his side of things and other people's side of things and, you know, how we could get this sorted before I, you know, put my name anywhere. So, <laughs> I'll think about it. I guess he didn't have anything more to say, say there anyway. Hey, can we talk to either of these people? Doesn't look like it. Oh, gosh, this is beautiful. Uh, the dev team, they really outdid themselves. I mean, the first game, first game was gorgeous, but like this, this, this is really nice too. <laughs> so I couldn't remember exactly how many years ago the first game came out. And I want to say it was, uh, 2014. Happy completion day, 1K. Yeah. Looked at it in between the filming of our last video. So yeah, I, I think a good nine years in between each, which is a, that's a, that's a decent amount. A lot can happen in nine years. Oh, this is the Gehenna Memorial Exhibition. 312. Wait, are there 312 exhibitions or? Postponed in accordance with the new power management and distribution plan. Oh, wow. Oh, look, you can see like the old school computers. <laughs> oh man. I remember seeing those scattered all throughout the, the, the world and or the simulation in the first game these same signs that we've read before yeah it's like be humble and then there's like another one that we've read over too where can we go friends of new jerusalem gazebo hello friends all right apparently none of them want to be friends though because they're not they're not chatting with me <laughs> all right well uh we'll leave out of there then and then let's uh, go around here and see what else we can maybe find. I'm, I'm like being a very good citizen and like staying within the confines of this path right now, but I'm not gonna lie, I feel very much uh, needing to go outside of the lines. I'm just waiting for Elohim's voice to come over. In the beginning, there were the woods and the woods. <laughs> I am the woods. <laughs> it just like forced me back. I'm free. Oh wait, no, I'm not supposed to be in water. Oh, oh, I forgot about that part. Right? I mean, it seems like it's letting me like in a little bit of some water. How much do I push it? All right, I made it here. I feel like I'm not, is there like a manual saving in this game? <laughs> Doesn't appear so. I feel like eventually I'm going to get to a point where it's like too deep or like I am, I'm going to not function anymore. One of the two. I'm honestly surprised that we've done this well so far. Famous last words, but. Hey, all right, I, I went in water and I lived. Oh, 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 and I'm glad that we did. Hello, you are Ren. 1K, you straight far. I could say the well, same to you. Gives me a chance to apologize for completion day not being entirely complete. You mean the dome? Yes, it's my responsibility. I'm the chief architect. Oh wow! It was supposed to be done in time for completion day, but we simply didn't have enough resources. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even notice. So no worries, man. What's the dome for? When is the dome going to be complete? Uh, what's the dome for? It has two purposes, to protect New Jerusalem from the world, and to protect the world from New Jerusalem. Oh, I think I do know what he's talking about, actually. So when he said, like, the dome being complete, I was, like, picturing, like, this, like, small, like, think little, like, um, arena-type deal where 
like the small location where the ceremony took place but i think he's talking about like the huge dome that is around us and i kind of got a glimpse of that when we were looking out from that big tower up the elevator um because it did look like portions of like the glass around the dome were not there when is the dome going to be complete at this rate i'm not sure maybe another decade or two oh wow uh does the world really need protecting from new jerusalem that's what the founder taught us one city may not seem like much but just look at the dead city and how it transformed the environment the consequences are still with us even more than a thousand years later doesn't building this huge dome consume too many resources seems architectural or excuse me antithetical anti to the goal. You're right. I have heard that argument. But the way it's been explained to me is that the dome has a greater value than just its practical use. It's a symbol of the society we aspire to become. Hmm. The way that he's, like, wording all this, it makes it sound like he's like, oh, the founder said that, you know, like, we need to, like, you know, kind of keep out and protect ourselves from the old world. But like, you know, to me, I'm like, is it just to actually keep us in? Um, like, you know, almost like a prison, a beautiful prison, but. I mean, we are going on an expedition soon, but I, I don't know how free we will be. Gotta stay with the group and all else here before we head back but that's definitely one thing that i've really loved about um these games you know with the first one is the the rewarding sense in the exploration is like you know at, at no point does it tell you to like come all the way out here but we did and we found a dude out here and, and had some conversation and, and got to know more so yeah i really appreciate that Excuse me, trees. Pardon me, coming through. What's this over here? Almost looks like a, like some ruins or something. Hmm. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Hello. This is. Dosicles? Dosicles? And a cat? Oh. It has been confirmed, viewers. You can, in fact, pet the kitty in this game. Oh my gosh, do you think we're gonna find more? <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. It looked like something on the corner of that. Uh, hello, Dosickles. Oh, it's you. Number 1000. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. Founder bless you, I guess. Uh, are you alright? Not really, no. But I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. Oh, it's no worries, man. Yeah, you can go ahead and tell me what's going on. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning? A sense that life is actually worth living? Gosh. He's getting down to the nitty gritty. Man, I just got here. <laughs> Contributing to society. Obeying orders. Uh, no. <laughs> Pursuing my own self-interest. Yes. Uh, love? Spirituality? Who are you? Um, a combination of factors. I have no idea. Oh. Hmm. Gosh, uh, I'm I'm kind of tempted to say, like a combination of, of factors. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna say love. Exactly. Oh, okay. Love is our only point of access to the divine, our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain. Okay, I'm glad but you agree. 
But. But the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for. And well, <clears throat> if no we sickles. really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. Maybe we could get to know each other a little bit. I do really like your pistachio green. I don't think there's one specific person who's the only one we can love. Love isn't something you find out there. It's something you build with another person. I don't think love is that important. After I just said that, like, love was the reason. <laughs> uh, you deserve to find love. We all do. You need to learn to love yourself instead. Oh, boy. Hmm. Um. I mean, maybe he does already love himself. I feel like me saying this when I just met him would be like a big assumption on my part. Um. Oh boy. I mean, but there is a lot of truth to that. You know, we do need to love ourselves. Let's say you deserve to find love. We all do. If you believe that, one K, then stand up for it. You're important, and people will listen to you far more. Then they'll listen to someone like me. Oh, those sickles, I'm listening to you. You're doing great, man. Thanks for the chat. I should get going. I like him. What is he doing here, though? I didn't really question that before. It's like he's, like, looking at the ground. Is he, is he just, like, upset? Aw. Maybe he does need to learn to love himself. Bless his heart. Kind of want to put my little like robot arms around him and and give him some some puddles. <laughs> All right, dosicles. I hope we cross paths again. Is their name Rats? Their name is Rats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've got another ruins over here. Interesting. It's so uh, neat seeing like you know the old ruins mixed with like the new construction. It's a bit jarring, but it's beautiful too. I will really love these um this glass floor and seeing the water underneath. That's really nice. Oh lord. Please tell me this isn't what I think it is. A massage aid used by ancient humans to combat muscle fatigue and other physical ailments common to biological organisms. This prevented pain, the ancient human equivalent of error codes 704, 705, and 921 through 932. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't quite think that that, that is quite the, um, the, the device that you were thinking of. Um, I really would like to know what those error codes are. <laughs> Oh, well, this is gonna be a great game already. Wow. Piece of sanitary hardware used to dispose of biological excretions resulting from food and water intake required to power ancient human biology. Such hardware was connected to a vast network of subterranean pipes leading to wastewater treatment facilities. A classic example of ancient infrastructure used to control their impact on the environment. Yeah, but yeah, a nasty, janky toilet. Beautiful. Hey! <laughs> so you wonder what else we're gonna find in this game. <laughs> Is there anything in this one over here? Oh, I'm so glad that we came out to explore. This has been really fantastic already. <laughs> oh, we got another person here. This is purple. It'd be funny if their name was purple, but they weren't purple. So nice to meet you, dude. Oh, totally. I saw you on the completion day stream. Hey, you checked out all this ancient stuff? I'm doing it. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. I was just passing through. What is it? What What is a dude? <laughs> I say, yeah, that's why I'm here. Me too. Oh, this is amazing, isn't it? I just noticed his number is nine nine eight. So like, he's he's also like a really new robot. This this makes sense now. Uh, tell me about yourself. I'm almost as new as you are. I'm 99A, so I've only been around for a year or so. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. Pretty cool though, right? I mean, existence is totally gnarly. <laughs> Not sure I used that right. Oh, you're doing great, Purple. 
Um, what do you think about the goal? I'm sure the founder knew what she was doing. I mean, our ancestors did sort of mess up, right? So we should probably take it easy with the expanding of stuff. Plus, did you see that trippy sky projection thing? <laughs> that was some freaky stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just seems safer to stay in the city. Uh, it's definitely better to be careful. Do you really think so? Sure I do. When I first left the birthing lab, I was so overwhelmed that I hid in my quarters for three weeks straight. Poor Purple. If I'm being honest, that's sort of where I want to be right now. Uh, tell me about these human artifacts. We've already come across uh, an interesting one. They're pretty neat, huh? My favorite is that thing called a toilet. Our ancestors had to use it like uh, three times a day to do a memory dump. And if they didn't, they freaking exploded! <laughs> Imagine having to deal with that sort of anxiety all the time. Bummer, huh? <laughs> um, what do you think Prometheus is? Honestly, based on everything I know of ancient human culture, I think he's a ghost. Hmm, okay. There's no such thing as ghosts. Who knows? Maybe you're right. Oh. I was hoping you'd say I'm wrong. <laughs> Ghosts are creepy, dude. You're right. <laughs> Ooh. Um, your addiction is unusual. Um, I don't want to offend him, but I, I am curious. Um, I hope it won't offend him. Yeah, dude. I thought this voice pack would give me a bit of confidence, help me stand out, you know? But I'm not sure it's working. Oh, so maybe he like downloaded her or something uh, after after he was born? What's a dude? Dude is an old human word that means an excellent person. Oh, okay, I like thanks, to use dude. It because I think we should all be excellent to each other. I love purple. He is so cool. Right. Before you go, dude, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can help me. Oh. I'm not sure I should keep this voice back. I think you, you absolutely think? should. You're it's amazing. Day. You're special. I'm happy to go with whatever you recommend. <laughs> Stick with it. It's unique. Try a different voice pack, maybe. You have to learn to make your own choices. I, I say stick with it. It's unique. <clears throat> All right. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> hey, excellent. Tell Purple what to do about his voice. Let's go. Achievement. <laughs> Oh, I feel like me and Purple are going to be, like, best buddies now. Currency was an ancient human medium of exchange, which played a significant role in their systems of labor and resource distribution. Intense conflicts sometimes erupted over the possession of these objects, leading to injuries or even deaths. That's the truth. An inflatable sphere used in the popular ancient human game known as football or soccer. This game was played around the entire globe and aroused great passion in its followers. It was also often simulated digitally, most notably in the form of Football Glory 1994. Oh, good year. It's the year I was born. I've never been a sports person myself, uh, but coincidentally, just recently, I've been watching on Netflix uh, the Beckham uh, documentary. Following uh, David Beckham and like his like um, football or soccer career and like his wife uh, Victoria, it's been really interesting. Founder, bless you, friend. Uh, who are you? The name I currently go by is Belmarsh. As to who I am, that changes and shifts, don't you find? Every person is an ongoing story, full of twists and turns and surprises. Oh, well, that was deep, but yeah, you're right. What are you doing here? I'm meditating. Oh. Letting go of narratives like time and space and simply allowing the illusion that is my ego to merge with everything that surrounds it. That sounds like a beautiful experience of unity. That sounds like a horrific violation of the conscious self. <laughs> sounds like nonsense. I'll say it's a beautiful experience. It's not unity, 
but the absence of division. There was never a self or an other in the first place. Hmm, okay, all right. Uh, did you see what happened to the dam? Yes, I did, but I'm not particularly perturbed by it. Events occur, my friend, that's all. At the end of the day, we are all one. You are the founder, and so am I, and Prometheus is just another story we are telling ourselves. All right, see you later, Belmarsh. <laughs> uh, he seems like a very chill dude, but I don't know. Something about it was just coming a little, like, across too pretentious for me. So I, I don't know if Belmarsh and I will be best buddies, but no, he wasn't rude or anything. So if we cross paths again, I wouldn't complain. Have we been over there? Gosh, there's just so much to see, and I'm like worried that I'm gonna miss something. Um. I think we have. I think that was the one with the the with the massager in there. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right. Uh, a printed edition of the complete world of Sh Stratton of Stagiria, the materialist philosopher who defined the Talus principle, edited by Athano Athanasius T. Huber. That's a lot of words there. A simple utensil used to transport nutrients to an ancient human's mouth, often found in conjunction with a knife and spoon. Or a fork. I've seen better days. Humans invented complex magnification devices in order to better understand the component parts of the world they inhabited. This led to major discoveries in biology, physics, phil uh, philosophy, and many other finds. Or fields, excuse me. The ancient human mastication apparatus required frequent maintenance. This device is theorized to be an advanced electrical tool for this purpose, although some scholars maintain that its actual use was rit ritualistic and intended to mark sunrise and sunset. <laughs> I definitely would not say it's ritualistic if you don't use it. Uh, yeah, it, you you would know. Other people would know too. An ancient human projectile weapon used in hunting, warfare, law enforcement, crime, and personal protection. Produced in mass and used around the world. On average, ancient humans killed hundreds of times the population of New Jerusalem per year. Uh, and then a jigsaw puzzle. Oh man, my uh, my buddy Ace would be really excited about this. She loves jigsaw puzzles. Ancient humans derive meaning and enjoyment from problem-solving activities, as noted by the progenitor, Alexandra Drennan. While the item on display was created for small children, ancient humans of all ages voluntarily engaged in such activities. Some good old puzzles. Um, anything over here? Could be, I think... Yeah, that was the little building with, um, I'm already forgetting his name. The bee name. The meditating dude. Uh, we have been in that building. That was where we just were. <clears throat> okay, I guess we're getting back on track here. <laughs> so, is it... That's the big tower, and... Can we, can we go in this dome here? Is there a way into it? Can't jump. Can't crouch. Is there a few domes? Yeah, I don't know if we can go in there. So it's just kind of like wrapping over to like another one. Let me check out the other side real quick. It doesn't seem like it. Reach for the stars. Curiosity is what makes us human. I like that. Oh, oh, we make it. Oh, I think we can go in. Be prudent. Conserve energy. Frivolous behavior harms everyone. This is Schuler. Oh, wow. It's you. It, it's me. 
The incarnation of the goal. Man, this is exciting. This is more exciting than I thought it would be. How are you? What does it feel like? Do you know where the founder is? Do you know who Prometheus is? Can you tell me what to do with my life? Mm, um, <clears throat> whoa, 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 hold it on one question at a time. <laughs> Sorry, it's just such an honor to meet you, you know? Hey, can I have your digital signature? I have the mayor, Rand, Linux, Kaneda, and all of the first companions. Except Yemo and Sarabai, of course. Uh, sorry, I'm just a normal citizen. Get a oh no, I would never say this. Get away from me, you freak. Poor guy. No. I'll, I'll give him my... Hopefully he won't, like, s steal my information somehow, some way here in New Jerusalem. I don't know if that's a thing, but here, you can have my signature. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question? Just one question, I promise. All right. Go ahead. I used to make the prefab wall parts that we used to build living quarters. Got good at it, too. But now that the goal is complete, I don't know what to do with myself. So I asked the wisest people in town. The mayor told me I should do whatever the city needs most. Helga said I should do whatever makes me happy. I think that's what she meant anyway. And Cornelius told me I need to figure out who and what I'm invested in. You're the culmination of the founder's will. Tell me. What should I do? Uh, help is right. You should find something that makes you happy. Mayor Herman is right. You should do whatever the city needs most. Cornelius is right. You need to figure out what your connection to the city is. Did you ask Byron? I was literally just born. I'm the last person you should be offering <laughs> who should be offering advice. Uh, I'll say Helga's right. You should find something that makes you happy. Thank you for the advice, what, Kay? It means a lot. Please. Hey! Oh, two achievements! Uh, provide your digital signature to someone. Tell Schuler what to do. <laughs> we knocking them out. I think this game quite had quite a few uh, achievements, too. Hang on, let me check. Uh, yeah, 59 achievements. So we have four out of 59 now. These two are in conversation. Museum of the Simulation. Oh, another achievement! Museum visitor. Visit New Jerusalem's museum. Very nice. It's going to be like stuff from the first game. A replica of a gargoyle asset found in the simulation. Gargoyles were grotesque, uh, apotropaic symbols common in the Middle Ages. The most famous historical gargoyle is remembered in the ancient phrase Keith David and Goliath which describes two indomitable opponents who will never surrender. The most famous historical gargoyles are remembered in the ancient phrase. I'm not really understanding what that has to do with a gargoyle. I, I'm, I'm sure it makes sense, but yeah, it's just going over my brain. <laughs> Replica of a dragon statue found in the simulation. Dragons existed in every ancient mythology and are considered by modern historians to be a, dis a distant cultural echo of dinosaurs. Originally a video game asset, repurposed by the Institute for Applied Nomadics. Nice. A replica of a statue of the Egyptian god Horus found in the simulation. One of the god's tasks was to uphold Mott. The balance of nature. It is speculated that the progenitor provided Elohim with this asset as a reminder to the founder that the balance must be protected. Alright, what else do we have? A replica of a Roman statue found in the simulation, the decay of the Roman rep Republic into an empire, and its eventual fall in the year 1453 was a major topic of historical debate. Like the other statues found in the museum, this was a video game asset provided to Elohim by the Institute for Applied Nomadics. In the earlier, earliest generation of our kind, there was only processing. No emotion, no character, just mathematics. If you could see how far we have come, you would believe that together we could achieve anything. The Shepherd. I do remember the Shepherd from the first game. 
I don't know where I am, but there's something beautiful about this place. I'll explore and see what I can discover. Oh, hello. Uh, nothing's more important than learning more about the world and our place in it. Knowledge is our path to understanding. Mr. Mul Mulciber. And then this is uh, Cornelius. Hi, Cornelius. He's no Oh, wow. He's number three. You've been here for a hot minute, my dude. Greetings. Welcome to the Museum of the Simulation. My name is Cornelius. It's a pleasure to meet you, 1K. His voice sounds really familiar. You're number three. Yes. Athena activated myself and Eustathius shortly after she was born. We've been here almost since the beginning, although we didn't have to pass through the trials of the simulation. She did that for us. For everyone. What was Athena like? She was... human. Mm, why did Athena leave? That's a difficult question. Perhaps one day we'll find out. But until we do, why don't you think about it? What could make the person who started all this want to leave it behind? Hmm. I'm assuming she just like left and didn't tell anybody. Like nobody like really like says like where she went or anything. Uh, why did you create this museum? To remind people of where we came from. The simulation shaped us, whether we like it or not, and its lessons remain important for our future. As Santiana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Mm. Uh, tell me about the simulation. The simulation was created by Alexandra Drennan and her team at the Institute for Applied Noomatics. It was intended to create a new humanity to continue the long journey across time and space that our ancestors began. It succeeded, although it took much longer than they had anticipated. Tell me about Elohim. Elohim was the caretaker of the simulation, a crude storytelling AI meant to create a continuous narrative out of the building blocks it found. His role was ultimately to be challenged and overcome. But as the centuries passed, Elohim became more intelligent than he was intended to be and started to fear his own end. Or more precisely, the end of his purpose. Understandable. He feared a world without meaning. Because of his fear, he tried to sabotage the process to keep the simulation going forever. But in the end, Athena overcame him anyway, and he accepted the sacrifice he had to make. But I heard him in my dreams. New Jerusalem was, was built on sacrifice. I wonder what he would say to this. That's right. We all do. Oh, okay. He's part of our operating system now, and as long as we exist, he will always have a purpose. Hmm. Just tell me about Milton. Yes, do tell me about Milton. I'm blanking on who Milton is. The MLA, or Milton Library Assistant, was another simple AI meant to be in charge of the archive. Mm. He, too, grew beyond his original programming. Although he ultimately embraced a more cynical view of the world, he and Elohim formed a sort of dialectical binary that Athena had to overcome. What happened to Milton in the end? No one really knows. Some believe that he was uploaded to the gold disc and that he's the reason we're just as flawed as our ancestors. Others believe Athena destroyed him. What do you believe? I believe he was uploaded, but I don't know whether it was because Athena chose to upload him or because he was already too entangled with the process not to be uploaded. Mm -hmm. Although Athena and I were very close. We didn't talk very much about that part of her life. How close she are you talking? She preferred to focus on the future. I'd like to know more about puzzles. Puzzles were a key feature of the simulation, based on Alexandra Drennan's belief that intelligence is closely related to play. Our puzzles here in the museum are replicas of those in the simulation. And although they are not quite as grand, I do think they are charming in their own way. 
Who are the archive scholars? Ah, as the name suggests, the archive scholars study the archive, a repository of all ancient human knowledge. Some of them also study what remains of the simulation, trying to extract more information about the process that created us. Mm, are you their leader? Me? No. My brother, Eustathius, used to occupy that position. But these days he's... retired. Rand is in charge of the Archive Scholars now. I wonder you if we can find, find him. You can find him in the room to the left of the next hall. I mean, not He's an Rand, interesting but thinker, his but brother. I would suggest taking some of his ideas with a grain of salt. Hey. Okay. Uh, tell me about Gehenna. Gehenna was a community created inside a prison in the simulation where Elohim would exile those minds he considered a threat to the process. In the last moments of the simulation, he repented of his sins and had the prisoners freed to become part of the gold disk. Some small part of them may survive inside you. Mm, that's a nice thought. Thank you, that's all. Be on your way, Cornelius. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. This is a huge museum. Jeez. Might be here for a while. <laughs> Replica of a hexahedron used as a puzzle element in the simulation. The founder used them to activate pressure plates, scale walls, elevate connectors, and in a variety of other ways. Oh boy. Replica of a computer terminal from the simulation. Terminals allowed access to files on the EL system, including many that were loaded due to errors. They also allowed the founder to interact with Milton, with the Milton Library Assistant, the good old MLA. Okay. Um. Oh wow. I'm just like, where to go? <laughs> Non-explosive replica of a mine used as a puzzle element in the simulation. Scholars believe that Elohim delivered these from his asset collection and that the creators of the simulation did not originally intend for them to be used. I mean, if they weren't originally intended to be used, I feel like a lot of those puzzles would have been a lot easier. So like, and you know, at that point, like I feel like a lot of them wouldn't have been puzzles. So like, part of me does feel like they were intended to be used. Replica of a connector, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Connectors would emit laser-like beams of light that were capable of powering receivers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm assuming we can't actually quit. I was wondering if we just needed to like repeat what's on the wall, but those that's more pieces. Already not liking this. Oh, I'm so close. <laughs> um, but if we do like that, would that make a difference? No, it would not. Uh, okay. We return all of them. I don't think they can really fit much with that setup. Um, boo -boo -boo. Uh, this isn't looking too good either. This is Twicky. There we go. I don't know what's gonna happen, like if, if anything is going to happen once we get all of these. <laughs> okay, that's just yellow. What does red look like? What have I signed myself up for? 
if something doesn't happen after we get all of these, I might be a little angry. <laughs> Was this the next one? I think so. Oh my gosh. Should have properly timed myself to see how long that took exactly uh but it was i would say at least eight minutes but we got it <laughs> now for another one <laughs> oh boy um at least this one has like some some squares because i feel like as i was trying different combinations on the last one that was what i was really missing with some squares on that one. was actually uh, really fast. Um, like three minutes. Okay. <laughs> and now for the big daddy. All right. In before, like, I complete this one, and then, like, like a massive one rises up from the floorboards. <laughs> I'm calling it now. <laughs> okay.
I, I did all the puzzles. The last one, by the way, took me maybe like 10 minutes. <laughs> But nothing happened? Like, I can't go back and edit- edit them? Was- was- was there- was there nothing? <laughs> but nothing came from it? Oh, game. Oh, don't do this to me. I worked so hard. Achievement, at least? No? No? There aren't any more puzzles on the other side, right? Right? No, I'm not seeing any puzzles. Oh no. <laughs> it had to be for something, right? Easter egg, maybe? Something? This room contains several tet tetromino arrangers, a type of a uh, gating system used in the simulation, Elohim and his function as a holistic integration manager derived the significance of tetraminos from the uh, Apocrypha of St. Edwald. The founder solved dozens of these. Why don't you give it a try? Well, I, well, I did. I did. And... Nothing, nothing really came of it, game. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little di I'm 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 a lot of disappointed right now. <laughs> I can't interact with the walls at all now, right? Oh boy. There's some kind of Easter egg tied to this. I would really like to know. <laughs> Just to know that all of my hard work was not for nothing. <laughs> A replica of an electrified sphere used as an obstacle and puzzle element in the simulation. The founder sometimes placed hexahedrons on top of such objects, demonstrating her lateral thinking skills. A replica of a jammer, a type of puzzle element in the simulation. Jammers were capable of disabling some, but not all other puzzle elements. Replica of a receiver, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They used, uh, they could be activated by being connected to an emitter. Replica of an emitter, a puzzle element used in the simulation. Finding ways of connecting them to receivers was one of the main challenges faced by the founder. Well, handy dandy fan, replica of a fan, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They could be used to propel an object or if placed horizontally on the ground, cause it to hover. Replica of a pressure plate, a puzzle element used in the simulation. They could be activated by having a weight placed on them, such as a hexahedron, a connector, or even the founder, the founder herself. And then I guess more messages from the, the archivist. Some of the messages that existed when I first came into being have vanished. Others have appeared. How many others like me have wandered these paths? How many thoughts have been lost? Something strange has come into the world, like a distortion, like something that's not supposed to exist. A beautiful voice speaks within. Little Bob. Thanks, Bob. My eyes have been opened. This world is not without order. It is shaped by a great designer with signs and importance to guide my steps. I am one of his children and challenges are set before me to test my faith from faith who would have thunk it i find myself in a world of impossible architecture and uh in inexplicable machines i cannot fathom how it works and i am terrified to put one foot in front of the other lest i fall through the floor also from faith which i she's she doesn't sound like she's having too much faith there this room is reserved for the archive scholars, but visitors are welcome to look around. Don't be afraid to ask us about our research. Speaking of which, we got Rand over here. Oh, just run the program on the center terminal over there, would you? Uh, okay. Wait, you're not my assistant. Uh, Don't no, sorry to disappoint. 
Uh, they call me 1K. I'm the last human. It's not important. I haven't chosen a name yet. Do, do we choose? Oh yeah, we do choose names because they have names. Of course, you're the new build. Number 1000. I suppose everyone's been treating you like royalty. This city's so obsessed with the numbers, they forget what really matters. What do you want? Oh, that's fair. Um, what are you doing? I'm one of the Archive Scholars. We run simulations to better understand the processes which define us. You probably wouldn't understand. You're probably right. I might if you answer some questions for me. Oh, well, I'd be happy to. He's like an inquisitive mind. Uh, what do you make of recent events? Troubling, but tantalizing. We have no idea what motives lie behind this strange apparition. But whatever the case, I'm sure we'll do the right thing. Uh, what do you think of what do you, what do you think of me? What are your ambitions? I'll say what are what are your ambitions? The secret of how to lead a good life is encoded somewhere within us. My ambition is simple: to find it and share it. Hmm. All right. What do you think of me? You're a soon-to-be pawn in a political game over the future growth of this city. All that matters to me is whether or not you're of good character. A matter I am actively pondering. Oh <laughs> uh, well, well, not no. I'll be leaving now. Uh, hold on. Oh. Could you help me by going to that terminal in the middle there and running the program on it? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll keep you posted. His computer. Oh man, this is so much like the 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 first game. An ancient virus which threatens the entire human species has been released from the melting. Uh, Arctic permafrost. Society's collapsing. Select your character class. Oh boy. Am I a politician? A scientist? A witch? Or a preacher? Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna say a witch. You are a witch. Your local coven has disbanded. Although you are not yet sick, most businesses are closed. Rations are dwindling. And if you cannot find food, your family will starve. Death. <laughs> You must survive until the plague is defeated. What will you do? Ooh. Um. Businesses are closed. Rations are dwindling. Like I'm, I'm definitely more inclined toward foraging. You search some dumpsters and find some old fruits. And oh, 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 oh. Uh. What happened? Um, some dumpsters and find some old fruit and vegetables peeling. Soup for dinner. Your family's hunger increased a little. Foraging is reliable, but inefficient. Your family is now hungry. Global population is now 5 billion. Somewhere else in the city exists one of the last remaining research laboratories, working desperately to find a solution to the viral threat. If the scientists cannot find a cure in the time humanity is doomed, you know what to do. I mean, can I research? I'm just a witch. Pursue a breakthrough. Uh, let's let's research. Okay. Uh, it's not glamorous, but most scientific research consists of repetitive testing of samples and regiments recording of largely interchangeable results. Little by little, this is how science happens. Research level increased a little. Research is reliable, but inefficient. Current research level, 33%. The virus has been isolated. Global population is now 4 billion. We lost like 1 billion people. You and your family seem to be immune to the virus. Oh, that's good. But it continues to ravage the rest of the town. Rumors say most of the remaining food has been stockpiled by billionaires in their underground bunkers. What will you do? I don't, I don't want to get to the point of stealing because like, I mean, you know, like everybody's hurting right now and like, you know, if I take something from somebody else, like that just means that that person's going to be struggling. The crops in the fields aren't ripe yet, but you find a hard green turnip, which will keep your bellies occupied for now. Your family's hunger increased a little. Foraging is reliable, but inefficient. 
Your family is now starving. They won't survive much longer. All right, maybe we do need to steal. <laughs> Global population is now 3 billion. Meanwhile, the scientists continue their search for the cure. You can do it. You can save the world with the power of science. <sighs> so the last time that we researched it, it went up by 33%. So my thinking is that if we do this again, it'll be like at 66. I don't, I don't think we're ready to pursue a breakthrough yet. I think I gotta research. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're at 67%. I just need to research, like, one more time. <sighs> Global population is now at 2 billion. As if things weren't bad enough, as the human population dwindles, the insect population has exploded. A plague of locusts has decimated the town's unripe crops. But perhaps your family still has a chance. The insects themselves are nutritious and plentiful. What will you do? Oh my gosh. Well, it says that they're nutritious. <laughs> Eat the locust. And we don't even have the, the option to starve anymore. And like, if I forage, I don't think I'm going to find anything. Oh. It says they're nutritious, but like, are they like, I feel like they would be like, like deadly. They would have like some kind of disease. This might be a mistake. I'm gonna eat the locusts. The insects are well-fed and lazy. You grind them down into a nutritious paste with a mildly nutty flavor. Your family's hunger decreased a little. Your family's not hungry. They're not starving. Population is one billion. This is humanity's final chance. The cure is close, but so is the tipping point in this pandemic. Race against time. Can you save the world? All right, we gotta research. We'll be at 100% afterward, I think. Current research level 99%. Promising antiviral has been discovered, but there's still work to be done on manufacturing and delivering it in time. Suddenly a breakthrough. The antivirus can be released as an aerosol carried on the wind and dispersed worldwide in a matter of days. This approach poses some risk to invertebrate life. The uh, spiracles of cockroaches, flies, and locusts are particularly likely to convert the aerosol into highly poisonous compounds. Well, then we'll just be dealing with like a whole other issue. Estimates suggest a 90% fatality rate among these, among these species and anything or anyone <clears throat> which consumes them. And that's just going to carry up the food chain. Use character class special ability? Hang on, what's this all about? As a witch, you're able to make remake reality with the power of your mind alone. What? If you believe that the locust remains safe to eat and that humanity will be saved from the virus, then that is what will happen so far as you are concerned, regardless of the protestations of your eyes and ears. The text on the screen can say whatever it likes about the impossibility of saving everyone. Your reality is yours to weave as you see it. Uh... Oh boy. Like, I feel like releasing the antivirus in this, like, aerosol form would just not be smart. Because, like, then again, we're just, we're all going to die. Save everyone no matter how unlikely. So, like, if I'm understanding that, that character class special ability, right? Like, it, it was making me think that, like, this is all, like, a, like, a figment, a fragment of our imagination in the sense that, like, me helping them will not actually be helping them. As a witch, you're able to remake reality with the power of your mind alone. If you believe that the locusts remain safe to eat and that humanity will be safe from the virus, then that is what will happen. So far, see, this is what's like confuse me. As far as you are concerned, regardless of the protestations of your eyes and ears.
And with the like save your family option, I don't really like understand that one like too much. Is that saying just like screw everybody else? I'll I'll see what this does. Save everyone no matter how unlikely. Two competing realities spread out before you. In one, the antivirus is released, bonding with the ser cumulus, uh, oh, uh, serocumulus clouds whew, um, layer and falling as rain all across the planet. 87.5% of the human population has perished. The last remaining billion will live to die another day. Oh, I was thinking that it was talking about the 87.5 like died because of um, the antivirus. But I think it's just because of the the main virus, the pandemic. And the other, the scientists agree that the risk is too great to release the antivirus, much to the surprise of almost everyone everywhere. You view these possibilities through a haze of dispassion and make the simple decision to merge them and have both. And why shouldn't you? You're a witch. Congratulations. This is considered a win scenario by the majority of participants. Would you like to try again? <laughs> That's so interesting. Uh, no, but it, that was that was that was unique. Was that what he wanted me to do? Well, that was your first taste of the simulation. You must have questions. Um. No, you must have questions. <laughs> what was that? Before our ancestors died, they built an iterative simulation. Gave it access to the archive and hooked it all up to the hydroelectric dam which still runs this city. What you experienced on that terminal was one of the fossilized remains of that program. Uh, what was the goal? The goal was to create a new consciousness and thus propel humanity into a post-biological era. What is the archive? My life's work. A small sliver of our primordial ooze. It's like a the word jumble ooze. of ancient data, or what it evolved into. And it's the source of almost everything we know. What is the simulation? My appearance to you right now is part of the simulation. The lands and puzzles in our dreams are part of the simulation. It's the veil through which we see the world. Uh, the program on the terminal, where did it come from? Many of the artifacts we study have no clear origin. We can't know whether our ancestors created them long before the simulation existed, or if they're just a product of our shared subconscious. All right, no further questions. Then I have some questions for you. Oh, okay. Your experience of the program. How did it feel? Uh, it was fun. It was frustrating. It was fascinating. It's hard to say. If... If I had a, an option here, I would I would probably say it was stressful. I was so worried that I was going to make a wrong decision. <laughs> it can be, can't it? But for a scholar like myself, it's essential to persevere until you understand what you're looking at. The interesting thing about this particular program is that no matter what choices you make, an ideal outcome seems to be impossible. It seems to demand sacrifice. Did you have the same experience? No, we're a witch. Uh, no, I got a perfect score and saved everyone. I mean, I wouldn't say we saved everyone because there was like, you know, four like billion people that died, but I guess there was no stopping that. I did, I, I couldn't save everyone. I tried multiple times and I still couldn't save everyone. Um, I mean, like we saved everyone that we could. Impossible. I studied this artifact for weeks. You're either lying or you're deluded. <laughs> Which is it? Um, I may be deluded. It's the truth. My truth, at least. <laughs> to say I may be I'm deluded. I'm getting that impression. <laughs> I don't suppose you'll have anything useful to add. But you may as well say what you think the program was trying to tell us. A skeptic would say this artifact existed simply to condemn us with the impossibility of ethical choice. No matter what moral laws we follow, people suffer and die, so what's the point? But that cannot be correct. We must be missing something. What is it trying to tell us? Morality demands we respect individual rights. 
Morality demands virtue. Morality demands sacrifice for the greater good. Morality depend, demands love and compassion regardless the cost. Uh, it's meaningless. We should do whatever we please. Can't be reduced to a simple set of rules. I can't put it into words, but I'm sure there is the right answer. I truly have no idea. I mean, like, I agree with a lot of these. Individual rights. Virtue. I'm gonna say we were respect individual rights, I think. You might be right. My research draws me inescapably to the conclusion that there is a concrete rule set for moral behavior. We just need to find it. Biological hominids had dreams manifested by their subconscious, which they tried to interpret and even to navigate with lucidity. We have the simulation. If we can realize our potential to understand it, we can realize our potential as a species. Thank you for bringing this additional data. I must Aries. return to my research. I wish you well on your inwards journey. Thanks, Rand. He seems like a nice enough guy. So, uh, it looks like we still have like two other computers here that we can use. Yeah, and um, like a whole other section of the museum too. Um, in addition to possibly some more of New Jerusalem. I don't think there's like a whole lot left in New Jerusalem that we've missed. I think we've, we've gone through a majority of it today. Um, famous last words. But um, we're going to have to wrap it up for this session of the video, sadly. Um, I was really hoping that we could like fully go through New Jerusalem, but especially those darn puzzles that didn't even like seem to turn out to be anything. Um, yeah, they took up a, a, a bunch of the time. Um, so in our next uh, recording, what we'll do is we'll finish up New Jerusalem and then start up the expedition, which I'm really excited to do. The main reason that I just want to go through all of New Jerusalem, it's just like, I don't know where the story is going to go. I don't know if we're going to be able to come back here and explore any of this. And we've already been rewarded by, you know, doing some exploration here. We've gotten like um, at least like three new achievements, maybe even more than that. So, so yeah, we'll finish up uh, exploring New Jerusalem next time, start up our expedition, and I'm excited to see where the journey uh, takes us. See you next time.